This is a technique video demonstrating our single stage combined autologous allogenic cartilage restoration technique. These are our disclosures. A 5mm incision is made over the iliac crest. Subsequently, a jam sheety needle is centered over the crest and directed between the inner and outer tables of the ilium. A 60ml volume of bone marrow can then be aspirated and is processed in a commercially available system. As the bone marrow aspirate is processing, attention is then turned to the cartilage defect. An open approach is designed to incorporate any adjunctive procedures as required. Typically, we use a standard medial peripatellar approach for medial tibiofemoral or patellofemoral defects and a lateral subvasus approach for lateral tibiofemoral defects. After exposure, a biopsy gauge is then used to harvest a segment of healthy cartilage from the lateral intercondylar notch. This is placed in a specimen cup with saline. The cartilage is then minced using an arthroscopic shaver and gathered in an attached tissue collector. This is set aside for later reimplantation. Using ring curettes, any non-viable cartilage is resected back to stable margins. The calcified layer is removed with care not to violate the subchondral bone. Hemostasis can then be achieved at the subchondral region of the defect using thrombin-soaked gel foam. Once prepared, the defect is sized using the foil sizing sheet provided with the hyaluronic acid matrix membrane. The foil is pressed into the base of the defect, cut to size, and then used to cut an identical sized membrane. This membrane is then seeded with one to two cc's of bone marrow aspirate concentrate and set aside. The graft putty is then prepared using biocartilage allograft extracellular matrix, along with the minced autograft cartilage and BMAC for the delivery of progenitor cells. This mixture is then placed within the base of the prepared defect and packed to a level where the graft height is recessed by one millimeter from the surrounding cartilage. Subsequently, a light layer of tissue fibrin glue is placed over the graft and left to rest for three minutes. The previously sized hyaluronic acid membrane is then placed over the graft tissue and secured with interrupted 6O vicral sutures along the margins of the membrane. A second application of fibrin glue is then placed over the membrane and allowed to set before taking the knee through a gentle range of motion to ensure security of the implanted construct. A post-operative rehabilitation protocol utilizing continuous passive motion machine is administered to all patients. For tibial and femoral repairs, the knee is placed in an extension brace after surgery. Continuous passive motion is initiated 72 hours following surgery for six to eight hours per day initially from zero to 30 degrees. Flexion is then increased by five to 10 degrees daily to a maximum of 90 degrees. CPM is used daily for six weeks. Patients are kept touchdown weight bearing for six weeks before progressing to weight bearing is tolerated by eight weeks. For patellar and trochlear lesions, CPM is similarly initiated 72 hours from surgery and used daily for six weeks. It is started initially from zero to 30 degrees of flexion. After two weeks, this is increased to zero to 60 degrees followed by zero to nine degrees at four weeks for a total of six weeks use. These patients may be weight bearing is tolerated while locked in an extension brace immediately following surgery. Patients undergoing concomitant tibial tubercle osteotomy are made touch down weight bearing for six weeks followed by progressive weight bearing with a goal of full weight bearing without crutches at 10 weeks. Here we demonstrate an arthroscopic second look at graft healing following the aforementioned technique. The patient in question went back to the OR for removal of symptomatic tibial tubercle osteotomy screws five months following index surgery and consented to a diagnostic arthroscopy to assess cartilage status. Clinically, she's happy with her result and describes marked improvement of her preoperative retropatellar pain.